buy on the internet a kit whereby you can remote control a cockroach. You can insert, as an amateur, completely freely at home, insert the electrodes into the brain of the cockroach and then move it about by pressing levers. Does that sound like fun? Cool science you can do at home? Or is it disrespectful towards a living thing? Or just plain cruel? I'm Adam Hart, and I'm an entomologist who studies insects for a living, so that fewer need to be done on animals more closely related to us, lab animals like mice and rats. People should think about whether the kind of research that is put in, for example, to be done on mouse work, well, that should not be replaced, actually, by fly work. So first work on the fundamentals, this will be far more cost-saving, and it has a much bigger chance of quick advance. And in that way, I think it would help science enormously. I think it's the more efficient and therefore also more responsible research to replace the use of mouse or other larger animals. But maybe many of us are being complacent by assuming that insects with their tiny brains are devoid of intelligence and feeling. There's at least one insect that's been amazing scientists in recent years as we've probed its cognitive abilities. We've removed them from that familiar environment to see how far we could push them in terms of the flexibility of their learning ability. And for example, found out that they can learn to string in order to get access to a reward that was hidden under a glass table. Where for example, if they, the bees receive an unexpected reward, a little sugar droplet where they haven't expected one, then if they subsequently test it in a a kind of test where they're asked if they think the glass is half full or half empty, then they'll respond in a more optimistic manner. In particular, what we're finding is that a lot of the kind of uh, computational machinery in an insect brain bears a striking similarity, this is our argument, to computational machinery in the human brain, and that machinery supports consciousness in humans. One of the interesting things about both the human midbrain and the insect central complex and brain more broadly is a particular kind of information integration. It looks like this structure integrates together information about the insect's visual world, the insect's own motion, and integrates information about bodily needs along with stored memories. As for Dave Goulson, an entomologist at the UK Sussex University, if he could bring in new rules or laws to protect insects, they wouldn't be focused on the welfare of individuals. They'd be about safeguarding populations. You've been listening to Discovery from the BBC.